<clears throat> well, it's been a while. It's been quite some time. I know it's a little dark in here, but it's okay. It's a little, it's a little dark, but we can work with it. So yeah, week fourteen, done it over with. Week fifteen, done it over with. Um, you know, it's Wednesday. It's been about a week. You know, I got ill at the tail end of last week, and it's only now that I'm being able to recover. So I'm gonna have to make up the video somewhere. You know, maybe another interview down the line. That'll be for later. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, week 14, week 15 of the NFL season. I mean, my goodness, we have a lot to talk about. I'm telling you, um, you know, four teams have clinched playoff spots. The Philadelphia Eagles, the Dallas Cowboys, the Baltimore Ravens, and the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers have also wrapped up the NFC West. So, yeah. So that that that's four playoff spots gone. And we have 10 up for grabs. And, you know, Philadelphia, yeah, they clinched, but they haven't won a game in quite some time. They got blasted by the Dallas Cowboys, who in turn, the Cowboys in turn, got blasted by James Cook and the Bills' rushing attack. How, how in the world did the Bills gain nearly 300 yards of rushing against this Dallas Cowboys defense? I have no idea. It's inex it's inexplicable at this point. But yeah, Philadelphia got beat out by Dallas. Then they lose the true lock of all guys because Geno Smith got hurt, you know, hurt his groin, and so Drew Lock had to step in. And I mean, how do you lose this? That is not the type of game you lose. Now, because of Philly's loss, and now because of other teams winning and losing and doing all sorts of things, things have been jumbled up. In the NFL playoff picture, there have there are so many teams in this thing right now. There are at least twenty teams in it for the last ten spots, or at least at least sixteen, sixteen teams for like ten spots right now. Because a lot of teams are eight and six, seven and seven, nine and five type teams right now. So it's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. Like you have Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who are absolutely doing their thing. You know, we thought the NFC South was going to be a, a tank division, but ultimately, again, it's the NFL. Teams are going to rebound and get to the point where they need to be at at some point. And, you know, the NFC South is coming down to the Bucks, led by Baker Mayfield, who's having a, you know, a really good season, honestly, you know, with Rashad White. And, you know, God with an Evans, you know, coming along the defense, you know, getting a little bit better, not too much better. Of course, the Saints, you know, Derek Carr still kind of, you know, trudging along, but Alvin Kamara is in the backfield. So, you know, and, and the Falcons, the Falcons are a mess, but they're still in this thing, surprisingly, with just three weeks left to go. And I got to tell you, it's going to be interesting to see how this gets down to the wire in the NFC South. There's going to be some big games coming up tomorrow, you know, and over the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, there's also Joe Flacco, who, you know, again, hasn't looked like prime Joe Flacco, hasn't looked elite in years, and yet he's leading the Browns to victory. The Browns' defense continues to impress and I mean, everything's just going the way it's going for the Browns. Everything's just going right for them at the right time, you know? Everything's going right for them. Um, so, yeah, there's just a lot of things that for this Browns team, for this Browns squad, there's going to be some there's going to be some key games coming up for them. You know, Houston will be one of them, and – you know, the Browns are in position to be in position. Uh, definitely an underrated team because of how good that defense is. And with the way Joe Flacco's been playing, he's been passing the ball a lot. You know, this Browns team could be doing some damage come playoff time. You also have the Bengals. Jake Browning isn't as bad as we thought. And the Pittsburgh Steelers are kind of fading, you know, with Mason Rudolph being the guy that's going to looking like he's going to get the start. We can pick it out at this point with 
you know, with Mitchell Trubisky out at this point, yeah, it's going to be Rudolph versus Jake Browning. Crazy kind of matchup, but it's 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 the most interesting Saturday game because there's two of them, and the other involves the Chargers, you know, who, who have fired Brandon Staley. Justin Herbert is done for the year. I mean, it's just all sorts of things went wrong. The GM got fired, too. I forgot his name. He had the Chargers basically out of the playoff hunt, and the Bills are still trying to find them themselves, you know, too. Again, they beat the brakes off the Cowboys, and – you know, the Bills will be kind of up and down, but they're, they're trending back up at the right time. This is the perfect time to be trending back up with December football, you know. And so the Bills, you know, they have an opportunity to continue their success against the Chargers. And, and there's also teams like the Rams, you know, Cooper Cup came back, you know, about a couple months ago and, you know, you know, things weren't going too great, you know, at first. Him and Puka Nakua were kind of splitting things off. But now with Kyron Williams in the backfield, who's been on a tear the past few weeks, just on a tear, him, Williams, and Matthew Stafford finally getting – he's finally getting himself together. He's looking like the Matthew Stafford that led the Rams, you know, all the way to the break. And that's a scary combination – on offense, defense, you know, still kind of, eh, you know, at times, but you know, there's still that Aaron Donald factor there. There's still, you know, the rest of that Rams defense factor there, at least the front seven anyway. So the Rams are in position to be in a position. Rams Saints tomorrow night is going to be one hell of a matchup. I'm telling you, it's going to be great. And you know, Christmas Day is almost here. There's three games on Christmas Day. Yeah, Philadelphia, New York, which isn't really going to be too much of a factor at this point because New York is way too far behind some of these other playoff teams, you know, in contention. But yeah, you know, New York kind of basically put the put the brakes on the whole Green Bay thing. You know, Jordan Love definitely looks like he's going to be, you know, better than what we thought. But you know, the Packers are in a position to where, you know, they're kind of, you know, just hanging in there by a thread. And the Giants help knock the Packers down a little peg in, and put them in the middle of the pack, and towards the end of the pack, really, of those bunch of eight and six, uh, seven and seven teams in the AFC. And again, Detroit can clinch this week. Miami can clinch a playoff spot this week. Cincinnati, I believe, can clinch a playoff spot this week. So, you know, there's all sorts of scenarios going around where teams can start clinching not just playoff spots, but maybe even division titles. So the Christmas present that, that the NFL delivers will be a ticket to the playoffs for more teams if things go the way they go because there's certain tiebreakers and stuff that have to be addressed as well. And, you know, there's other, you know, situations like Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars who have lost, you know, consecutive games after consecutive games. They're trying to get back into it. But, again, Christian Kirk been out. You know, Lawrence hasn't really been hitting his stride lately. And it, it's just been, it's just been kind of – it's been kind of – yeah, again, they're going to take off the butts this week. That's going to be a really interesting matchup. Miami – you know, still trying to prove the doubters wrong, I think. They haven't really beaten anybody with a pulse. Again, this isn't college football. This is the NFL. So take – they haven't beaten anybody with a great assault, please. Take that with a great assault uh, because, you know, the best teams have been performing like absolute trash against the other good teams all season long. Like, like what are we talking about here? Like – the top teams have just been playing blowouts against each other all season long, like Philadelphia, San Francisco. You know the uh, the second Dallas Philly game blowout, Bills Dallas blowout. You know there's just been blowouts after blowouts after blowouts. I think the best game of the year, and honestly, our MVP should be Christian McCaffrey at this point too. So you know if you if you don't mind me saying that Christian McCaffrey should be the MVP, but you know I I, I think. I think 
I don't, I don't know what I don't know what we're talking about here. What are we talking about here? What are we talking about that hasn't been said already? Like, why are we discussing guys, you know, like Brock Purdy in this discussion? You know, I get it. By the way, I I get it. CMC has done way more. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's there's guys like Lamar that are in consideration, which I just don't I just don't I just don't see the appeal. Of Lamar with a DMBP. I mean, you know, there was a time when Christian McCaffrey should have won the Heisman a decade ago, about a decade ago at this point. This is the year he should win the MVP at this point. Come on. I know the 49ers are stacked. They look like the best team in the NFL. I think that's what a lot of people have been saying. And I've said, you know, that they're pretty much at the top of the list, you know, all season long. They just had a rough point. At things, but come on, come on, let let's be real. See if see if it's our MVP. Um, if it's not, then I mean, who who are you gonna give it to? You gonna give it to Brock Purdy? He hasn't he hasn't had the you know, most consistent type of results each and every week, but whatever, I guess. Um, you could say Lamar. You could say Jalen Hurts. I mean, but again, I just don't. I just don't see. I feel like, you know, this this guy is our MVP, and I posed that question in the community tab. I feel like it, it should get some more traction. So, it should get some more traction, you know. But whatever. What do I? What, what do I care? That's what I think. That's just what I think. But I know a lot of people may disagree with that. Um, again, Detroit. Could lock up a playoff spot this week against a Viking squad starting Nick Mullins of all guys. But again, the Vikings, you know, somehow crazily are still in this playoff race. Again, I, I just don't know how, but they're in it. They're in it to win it, I guess. You know, there's other teams like the Colts that I haven't really touched up on. You know, Michael Pittman, you know, done for basically the entire year, I believe, at this point. But, you know, Gartner Minshew at the Colts are like 8-6, and six too. And that, that's just not even – we're not even scratching the surface with some of these teams. Like, this is going to be a log jam to end the season. These final three weeks are going to be a log jam of craziness. And I just don't know where we're going to get our other playoff teams. We have four. We have four set, but we don't have a ball. So we <laughs> need 10 more. We need 10 more, and I don't know who these 10 are going to be. I think I know who some of them are going to be, but I don't know all of them. I think the wild cards are going to be the most problematic as far as finding out, you know, what in the world, who in the world is going to be in the NFL playoffs. I think, you know, Houston is could be in there, but again, there's been some injury stuff with them. CJ Stroud's been They'll banged up, take Dills out for the season, everything like that. So there's just a lot of factors going into this that that make for a compelling story. And the NFL story for the 2023 season still has three weeks of regular season football left. So the road to K272 is it, it's, it's a never-ending road of craziness. So we got Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, of course, tomorrow night as well. You know, it's going to be one hell of a weekend. And, and of course, that Saturday as well, populated also with some, you know, some college basketball, some college football bowl games that I'm not going to watch. So, you know, it's going to be it's going to be one hell of a weekend, I think. You know, football three straight days in a row, you know. You know, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Just compelling football. That's what you like to see. That's what the NFL Week 16 is going to be about. Too many games that have playoff implications in them. It's, it's man, I, I, I cannot wait. So until Friday, so until Friday evening, uh, I'm going to get on out y'all's hair. Again, I'm sorry it took this long, but... Again, I've been ill for the past three weeks, really. I've been ill for the past three weekends. So, like, each and every weekend, I've developed some new form of 
probably, you know, the flu or COVID or whatever. And it only took me till just now to kind of get back to close to 100%, but not, I'm still not at 100% yet. My throat is still kind of eh. But yeah, what do y'all think? Do y'all think Christian McCaffrey is the MVP? What do you think about the NFL playoff race? Tell me, sound off in the comment section, sound off in the community posts on the community tab. And I will see you all on Friday to talk a lot of lacrosse, man. There's a lot of lacrosse to talk about. So, uh, yeah, take care, everybody. Have a good rest of your Wednesday.